for over 400 years. The armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos's final conquest has come to our corner of the world, and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Graven Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos's ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator. Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos's minions. Tunan brings Kairos's laws to newly conquered lands. Aided by the Fate Binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fate Binders when Kairos's armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? Okay, 400 years, that's pretty long time. I guess this guy has the immortal throid or whatever. That proves that it's overpowered as hell. So, a calculation. In Northern Empire, where you were born, and enjoy equal protections under the wall of our old Kairos. In the southern lands of Tyrus, only May may all our captain ships. But real estates is restricted to women. Men may lease the durable ownership of the land is in tears, always passes to the eldest daughter or sister. That's an interesting war system. Most sons either their father's profession by their mid-teens. Those without a profession or family leads to work can find purpose by pledging service to one of the Overlord's mighty Archons. Criminals, Daleks and others are often considered into the army of the Archons. If a child cannot forge his own skin, he will certainly find one in battle. Huh. Oh yeah, sure. So I actually went through the counter creation once and created my own portrait. There you go. There we're gonna choose something that fits. Come on. Face. Yeah. Yeah, he looks pretty much like the portrait, doesn't he? Next. So. Yeah, I'm gonna choose one of them. I'm not gonna read them all. A diplomat. Noble Scion. Guild Apprentice. The seven three guild. I am actually not very sure how magic works in this world, so that's probably not gonna be explained. So we're gonna choose the diplomat, because yeah, diplomacy diplomacy is always awesome. There isn't a fight, you cannot win with diplomacy. Or you know, a realm you can plunge into chaos faster than diplomacy. Through their own, uh, they, <coughs> they would never tell you why. Carol's bestowed great wealth upon your family for some unmentionable service, and your parents used this wealth to have you raised far from home. Your childhood was a nomadic tour of territories with higher tutors, their fleeing branded 
Ah, friendships, okay. <laughs> Couldn't read the word for some reason. Where others had stability and routine, you had worldly and varied education. That sounds nice. A careless world is far from city, found that you legal tort uh, trouble. You've. Okay, you were taken before Tunon. The educator is the Archon of Justice, War of the Conquered Realms, and Arbitral Disputes. Okay. You made to stand trial. Not only did you plead your innocence, but you turned the accusations around to the accuser, wasting the court's time. The Archon of Justice concurred, amused by your wit, wisdom, and inadequacy. Tunon claimed you as his newest enforcer. Yeah, that sounds like me, of course. Okay, let's see. Sword and shield. I look like an unsolid. I imagine that the unsolid would wear something like that. Okay. The sword is ridiculous. I mean, look at it. It looks rusted as well. The shield, however, looks amazing. Great sword. Honestly, the great sword does look a little bit better. Bows, for everyone who likes to use them. You changed my armor, actually. That's awesome. Hmm. A javelin. So those are the things that give you javelin. What do you give for this one? Athletic 5, dodge 5, an arm attack 6. Yeah, let's go with an arm attack. Fury of blows. So we are actually using dodge more than parry. My coils, please. Use parry here. Parry 5, yes. That gives you a lot of things. So does this one, of course. So what do you do? Damage 20. 16 to 32 crush damage. And this one? Dual wield, throw weapons, one handed weapon. Yeah, let's go to Nantes. I feel that's gonna be fine. Here, oh, that's something else. Spear. Wow, that spear is... Not as effective as a Hostate spear, to say. I like that he has pouches. Gary stuff in them. Yeah, well, we've chosen an arm, so let's keep on with it, I guess. Wait, does that give me the same skills? <laughs> Who cares? Of course! Black and red sounds amazing! How the brown ones? Yeah, I like this one. So there's no way to get rid of those lines here, I guess. Okay, black it is, I mean... Who would want to fight someone with an orange mask, right? Red is usually a pretty decent color. Banner customization. Ooh, any nice symbols here? I don't see any. This one looks nice, though. Black and white. Yeah, that's a pretty decent combination. There are almost no animals here, which is a plus. However, some of those insignias don't make any sense whatsoever. What is this, a dying bird? Uh, 
Wow. That really might look fine, but uh, if you look at it, you'd see that it actually doesn't give the shadow that it's supposed to. I'm gonna go with this one. Yeah, blue and red, but should the insignia be red or the background? How's the blue and black look? Yeah, that looks fine. Sorta. Of. We're gonna go with this one. Yeah, they don't like this insignia as much, so we're gonna go with this one. So, what should it be? A red fill with a blue beacon of hope? Or a blue background with a symbol of hopelessness? Why is it shattered? Hmm. I actually am looking at those right now and I'm thinking that that looks kind of cool. But yes, we're gonna go with blue and red. Like so. That looks nice. Name. Something interesting with M. Ooh, Melacroth. Yeah, that'll work. Should it be with H? I'm not very sure. Melacroth. Melacroth. Yeah, let's have an H. Right. Endurance will magic. I think we should go with less wits. Resolve one of the diplomacy in the previous game. Here I'm not very sure if it's the same. Go with 9 on that. Talent 10. Quickness. Come on. Can't click the button apparently. Why don't we go with this? This? Armor deflection. Let's go with this one then. Okay. We're not going with Pare. Lore. Chakra's ability to set for information, to gather clues. Magic users who wish to learn new runes to power their spells. To determine what you know about the history of the world. Oh, okay. Let's have it on 25, I guess. Dodge should be at least 40. 35 for this. 40 at that. Thirty-five. Well, I'm not very sure. Plus five because I'm a diplomat. Let's go with twenty one and move you up to thirty nine. Forty. Okay. Yeah, usually I go with a lot of lore, but this time I'm gonna choose something differently. So, Conquest. Selecting your Conquest option will allow you to play through Kairos Conquest on... Okay... Let's go with Conquest then. All 
all the world has fallen to Kairos. And now the Overlord's eye is on the Tear, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos's reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Horus, march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. I don't know if you guys looked at the map before we started, but his conquest made no sense at all. In the early days of 428, Kairos' armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment, the mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the conquerors. Until it's too late. Wow, that's literally the worst plan they could have had. The worst plan. During conquest, you will decide your counter's action during Kiros' invasion on Tyrus, shaping the world through which you would venture over the course of the game. You can tell me about this guy. Name of a, a name out of legend for centuries. The Overlord has considered power, sending vast armies to swallow entire realms. The most powerful mystic the world has ever seen. Heroes can issue edicts, magical proclamations, level cities, spread box, ooh, send lands, or change the course of seasons. Okay, he can't even demand that from weather. Yeah, I know there is magic in this world, but I don't think there are any other races except humans, so... Whatever. The Archons, the masters of magic throughout the known world. How to... Uh, how to... Ah, uh, bow, not how. Interesting, bow to Kiras and the Overlord rapidly destroys any Archons unwilling to kneel. The sorcerers and madmen lead the Overlord's armies in near endless conquest as the realms of the known world fall to the Overlord. These captured territories are divided up amongst the Archons to manage. Able to deliver suffering and woe to every corner of uh, Teratus without leaving the capital Few have seen the Overlord in most recognized name in the world. Only the Archons can say what the Overlord looks like. Oh! I guess I'm gonna have that honor at some point. Choice, each choice you make affects your character and how major factions of theorists respond to you. Your decisions matter. Choose wisely. Thank you for the tip. You won. Of Kira's conquest. Is that the entire map or just that Tyrannus thingy? I don't know. So, the Bastard City. Yes, even for a sword, that is a stupid name. Stood on the northern border between Kairos Empire and the Tyrus, it ruled upon a natural harbor. At the crossroads between the realms, city was anxious of commerce to the Tyrus. It was the central of all wealth. To the northerners, it was little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos' military conquest. Circumstances were idle, for you prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos' armies. Taking the city would send a message to the rest of the tears. Kairos' will is insurmountable, if you say so. Gates of Judgment, the first major engagement of the war, Kyrgyz armies cross the mountains and establish a foothold. Infiltrate the tears. History would remember the Gates of Judgment as the first battle of the conquest, but the real combat unfolded with the advice unit of both armies preparing for the coming war, the disfavored and the scarlet chorus. Each had planned to infiltrate the capital city. Which army did you join? Well, I am not a fan of people who fight without discipline, so 
We're gonna go with the disfavored here. You tend your skill to the disfavored scouts to capture the border garrison. Garvin Ash insists that an early victory in the offensive would boost the morale of his troops and diminish the haughty overconfidence of the southerners. Okay, nice. The old bound scouts identified a modest border defense and collaborated on an organized attack that would leave the enemy uncoordinated and cut off from aid. You oversaw the presentation and offered your opinion on the strategy. When the clashing of swords and spears fell to silence, followed by the cheering of disfavored scouts, you were the last surprised. Yeah, of course. But that's it. So one was fight, the other was infiltrate, I guess. Inside agent or counting the fire. Containing. The fiercest opponent in the busted city were the mages of School of Windwraith. Too barbaric to use their power responsibly, too unbodied partitions needed to be stopped. How did you think the hot tempered mages into their own undoing? And we harbor garrison captured by your disfavor allies. We traveled ahead to Chaos armies and lurked into the shadow of the bastard city. You decided that convincing one of the locals to kill side would help bring the city to its knees. After all corruption starts from within. I actually have to take this one. <laughs> Bus talking smuggler or a well informed ca guard captain? Okay, I think I'm gonna go with those guys actually this time around. You came to an agreement with a well connected smuggler who knew how to sneak agents of the Scarlet Corals behind the city walls. The Scarlet Corals were better operatives than soldiers. Yeah, their leader was the spymaster, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, better operatives than soldiers. And this work required a subdued touch. Next, after accepting his diverse payment, the smuggler uncovered a long forgotten tunnel, then instructed with the sewers of the bastard city, armed with maps and subterranean uh, layout. Your Scarlet Coros allies fanned out to occupy various city districts under cover. They spent the ensuing weeks murdering key officials and sabotaging the fences whenever possible, weakening Tyre's capital under the, uh, the very noses of its leaders. Yeah, well, that's how spies actually work. Betrayal of the Bastard City With taxes soon who trade the plants you in the Bastard City ahead of the main army. You were softened the city defenses for the arrival of Kiro's forces, but you wanted a decisive gesture that would give your allies a uh, meaningful advantage. How did you assist in the fall of the Bastard City? Well, let's see. Betrayal of the Bastard City Okay, to be honest, I would choose this one for gameplay purposes, but I will choose this one for storytelling purposes, so let's get on with it. Spreading the word of Kinos, you converted the poor dis uh, disfected into a hidden army of the Scarlet Coros. Once the dust settled, the army wished your bloodlust their troops with these sleeper cells. Okay, that's nice. So let's go with this. It didn't take much to convince the bastard cities down, uh, down dropped that Kiros was the superior power. You armed with a uh, weapon and knowledge of a signal he would rise when the time was right. As the armies appeared outside the walls, you ignited the spark and fanned their anger into a full scale riot. The chaos they spared in Kiros' name weakened the city to such an extent that its inevitable fall was but a formality. Cool. 
And thus, Bastard City fell. I say, I actually do like the story Hmm. So the Bastard City settles into a new stage of normalcy, with every tower displaying Chaos Banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a discordant career to come. The armies divided into two fronts, migrated south of Tarrant, sent word that you were to join the next. Um, I actually frontier of Cure's conquest, either as judge and overseer of the settlement of Layton Crossing or as war advisor, with the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. And since we don't know about those places, we can read about the Latin Crossing. However, nothing says about the Apex. Okay, built in the shadow of Old Walls Junction, in the realm of heaven. The Leyton Crossing is growing trading settlement, the nearby rivers and rich in iron ore. Though the locals lack the technology to smelt the forge, the element, in the years following Kiro's conquest of the tears of population of Leyton's Crossing swelled with refugees fleeing the destruction of their homeland, the presence of the forge-bound mining. The iron, alone with their guards, make this makeshift settlement a vital source for Kairos armies. Okay. The troops of Mountain Realm of Apex stood idle in the safety of their valley, biding their time as their neighbors in the bastard tier fell in the second year of war. Ah, uh, a joint force of disfavored and scarred corps and rode over the mountains to take the control of the tier, Central Valley. Okay, so that's the Central Valley, which means that we're going to go for the crossing. We need the iron. Sometimes during wars, iron is more important even than gold. And so I set out for the Leyland's crossing. Second year of Kiro's Conquest. Years ago, Laden the Bold fired a small. <coughs> okay, let me start over. Years ago, Laden the Bold found a small merchant town in the essence of ancient Oldwell, a pack between the settlers and the mercenary company meant that caravans were able to travel without fear of bandits or bane and the tower thrived in modest insignificance. Leyden's crossing drew Kairos' attention for the iron deposits in the surrounding hills. With the region under Kairos' control, the northern smith mage could set up a workshop to refine ore and arm less favored with the finest weapon in the known world. With iron, really? Okay, I can mention five elements that were better than iron, but whatever. That does not include magical metals, by the way. The Archon of Secrets dismantled the mercenary support with generous bribe, taking the crossing in the bloodless victory. Ganon dispatched you to travel along Kairos' forces and bring order to the region. Oh, so I'm bringing order now. That's great, because I'm a diplomat. That's my game. The Iron must fall, or... Coat of Singing. The Archon of Song's power ensured the minds of his favorite soldiers. So, okay. Ensnared. Not ensured. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I misspelled a lot of words. Whatever. Smith Mages. <laughs> Smith Mages. What? No place for blacksmiths or, you know, engineers there. Okay. Kiros smith mages worked day and night to create weapons. 
no one voted their dedication, yet production was low. The plans that came to light proved <coughs> divisive to the disfavored and disguised core. On one hand, any additional manpower was needed for fighters, not forgers. On the other hand, the celebrated weaponry of Kiro's armies needed to be fearlessly guarded. So, we're going to conscript one of those armies to guard the weapons, which means one of those armies will be on defensive. Now, I think the more disciplined one should guard, while the more uh, more barbaric one should go right ahead and fight or your way around. I'm not very sure. Beastmen? I thought only humans exist in this world as intelligent beings. Unlike this world where dolphins are the number two contestant. Well, not really. Let's think. Okay, we're gonna go with this guy, the Scarlet Car Horse, took refuge in this recent influx and forced them to serve in Kiro's military. He reposed uh, these individuals to haul wagons of iron for the Smith Mages. This proved an inconvenience to the Scarlet Cohort, who relied on their forces of numbers to be effective in the field. The iron must be protected by people who we can trust, whom we can trust, and Beastmen don't seem like a good choice, apparently. The population of Linden Crossing has swelled from the employ of lands destroyed by Kiro's armies. Uh, although the Sacred Koron fought to keep the refugees under their control, the need for production could not wait. The new recruits were assigned to haul iron ore from treacherous mine shafts. Labor more benefits slaves than careless artisans. Though this favor grew stronger with the advantage of more weapons, the Sky Kohor diminished as their ranks found themselves with one less opportunity for growth. Yeah, well, choices had to be made. Pick of an armory. Guardian of Dew. Oh, okay, this one looks actually better in my opinion, pick of the armory. Since you aided the production of weapons, commanders of both armies enjoyed for additional armies. They offered all manners of bribes to be next in the uh, in line for a final station with master of the uh, forge. How did you state just for iron? No, should we go neutral here? I mean, both of them need weapons and iron is a precious commodity in this time. Hmm. 
Now let's go with no chew. You allowed no changes to the orderly disposition of iron and punish those who tried to bribe you twice. Using language that left nothing open to interruption, you let both of the commanders know that bribery would not be tolerated in Kiro's military. That didn't stop either of them from seeking you out again, making promises of wealth and advancements. If you show her there are those special favors, dedicating. Okay. Hi, if I showed special favor, right? I can't read right now for some reason. Deciding that enough was enough, you ordered both the commanders flocked in view of their armies, letting pain and humiliation teach them where reason had failed. Nice. Who controlled the crossing? Tragedy struck when a mercenary hired by the voices of Nerad injured a forge bound artisan, leaving him unable to proceed his craft, do not order the mercenaries to leave the city in the hands of Kiros, more responsible servants. Only a token garrison could be left behind while the armies returned to the fort, as the disfavored and Escalas cohorts show increased tension and hostility towards each other, to run the creed it's best that only one force control the crossing. Who controls the crossing? Well. We're gonna give it to the Scarlet Cohorts. They fought for the city and protected it. They know their places around here, so I'm gonna give it to them. The Scarlet Cohorts flooded Leighton's crossing with overagers and undisciplined recruits. In the first few days of occupation, settlers suffered under rampant theft, murder, rape, and arson. By the following week, horsemen. Uh, who swallowed chaos for personal gain or dead, strung up by the more disciplined half that took up the reins and self-appointed bosses of Lyndon's Crossing. The forge bound continued to mince iron weapons and armor, which Cairo's merchants crafted to the disfavored garrison elsewhere in tires, shipments were light or something absent in Silent Crossing and the uh, Scarlet Cower. You must have claimed ignorance of the matter. It doesn't matter. I gave it to them. That was my decision. They can keep it for now. Okay. With the mercenary expelled, Lyndon's crossing under new leadership, Kimur's forces congratulated themselves on bringing order to the Southland and guaranteeing a decisive flow of resources. Over the course of the vision, the army front advanced further into the tears. Its skills were needed in the realm of Azur, Stoward, or Venom Citadel. And I can't read about any of this, I guess. Quiros uh, dispatched the Archon of Stone to subjugate the nation of Azur. Kiros conquering gaze fell upon the Valium Citadel, its treasures, its knowledge, its secrets. Ooh, that sounds like a good option, in my opinion. We can actually read more about this. With its easily defended position and rich military tradition, the realm of Stewart was the most formidable realm in the tears. Oh, man. Okay, okay, I, I might need to throw a die here to decide which one I will go. Let's not read about the Citadel. The Valium Citadel was library fortress, the largest archive of written words in the tears. School of Ink and Quill proceeded the maintained of archives of ancient lore, for centuries standing apart from the political upheave of the younger realms as an enduring pillar of knowledge and culture. To beat your enemy it's best you know your enemy. Okay, let me just get my die. Okay, so on 1, 2 and 3 we're going for this one, 4, 5 and 6, this is our place to go to be, so it is 
six. Wow. Okay, we're going for the knowledge. Year three of Giver's Conquest. The volume Citadel was an archive of library at massive scale. Its inhabitants were known as the School of Ink and Quill, a circle of mages that centuries ago carved out their own monitions, refuge of on lands unsettled by other major realms. Legend said that the Citadel holds the treasure trove of arcane knowledge. The overlord spies infiltrated the school of confirmed as much. The time was ripe to send the death mage great library fortress and force the scholar to yield to Karas. Chain of command. Okay, I'm not very sure, however. I'm gonna toss it die. I, I actually think I'm gonna go with this one. So, let's read what it does. Songs of Ensnarement. Cyrene, Archon of Song, use her power to enthrow enemy mages who crept beyond the citadel walls. After Kiro's forces trotted up, the arcane participants, the disfavor began exuding new captives before they could share dangerous knowledge, a crime under Kairos' wall with the Scarlet Colors. Oh. Okay, well, he did break the wall, so I guess I'm going to go this time <laughs> with the disfavored. You count the disfavored with a compromise. The sages' mouth would be bound with iron bridle, preventing them from spreading their forbidden knowledge. As the disfavored fitted the sages with their restricted masks, the scarlet cores openly criticized the suppression of enemy intelligence, who gave the soldiers a stream lesson on Kiro's walls and the insensitive treatment of forbidden knowledge, but that did not stop whispering and rumors that the conquest was being mismanaged. It's gonna be conquered. Hmm. A group of enemy mages surrendered to the uh, disfavored, claiming to be spies loyal to the voices of Nerath. No one in the army could verify the claim. The disfavored waited to interrogate the mages, but the Scarlet Cohort protested, demanding that the prisoners be given to their custody. They couldn't risk the voices of Nerath's secrets falling into the wrong hands.
Okay, <clears throat> we're going with this one. The way it meant angering the scum and core, the mages was the favored property. They remained in custody while you revealed their claims. You took time poring over the mages, Conf <clears throat> confiscated documents, finding no blunt message to the voice of Nerad or anyone else. Resolve to conquest the mages yourself. Question. When you reached the cells, you discovered a, the bodies, each of them slaughtered, inversely displayed. Tense discussion and accusation followed, with no, no evidence to suggest responsibility party. You were forced to let the matter drop. Ooh. Okay. Crust file, the professional treatment. You showed the disabled and the scout cohort retreat deeper into the mountains, leaving your uh, detriment with skeletal crew. Do not send word that Karos uh, patients had run thin. The overlord would cast the edict of fire on the enemy. The parchment arrived, Sunder's case, great iron written on it. The word of spell powerful enough to destroy the Valium Citadel. You had the choice of when to read the edict. Reading it at sunrise would offer your enemies no warning of the division to come. You could also wait until sunset, give them ample time to flee or make amends. Which one should I choose? Oh, I wanted to keep the knowledge, but apparently that's not a possibility anymore. Claiming they had spies within the citadel, the Scarlet Chorus urged you to warn the mages of the Warlord's Edict. Granting their request, you met with the enemy under the blue flag of peace and warned them of their doom, giving the Chorus spies and the enemy a chance to run. Or. Opting to give the enemy no quarter, you proclaim the Edict of Fire in the first moment of dawn, granting the enemy no warning of the destruction to come. Chorus insisted your actions doomed their spies, and this favor flawed your decision. This time I'm going with those guys. There is no doubt in my mind that it was these guys that slew the prisoners. You read the Edict. Why don't we read about the Edict? Karos' um, uh, most powerful magic is that of the Edict, commandments cast upon whole regions that can control and destroy man, nature alike. Once cast, the Edict can rain fire within crops, demoralize cities, ashes in endless nights, or do whatever it is that Karos envisioned. No known force, magical or mountain man, can slap the Edict. To each Edict is often worked and includes some condition of congratulatory. A contingency that will see its end. Some edicts have been short lived, delivering days of wanton catastrophe, just as many have lingered for centuries. Ooh. <clears throat> you read the Edict of Fire. Yeah, it's called the Edict of Fire. As the new sun rose behind the citadel, casting long shadow in its wake. You were the last person to see that hall of knowledge, the moment before the devastation. The earth shook the red-orange light glowing in the foundation of the spawning citadel, bumbling up from under the library, a torrent of lava heft with explosive force gushing from the windows and twin loose bricks melting hostile trenches. In the surrounding land, the mages awoke to smoke and fire. For most, it is already too late, only a handful of building mages escape the smoldering collapse of the massive library fortress. Chaos will be done. Well, 
So that's two cities destroyed and one absolutely conquered. The armies of Kiros left the devastation of Velom Citadel in silence from that day forward. The tears came to know that once noble citadel of burning library. This was the undisputed loss in resources, and knowledge and culture and life. The message had been sent. The overlord will not tolerate defiance. You didn't have long to rest before turn on code you into servants once more. You're one of the last to depart from the mountains. And as you journeyed off to your spotted few campfire in the mountains, they were mere speaks, dwelling by the inferno, the last gasp of survivors, or perhaps looters from Kairos armies, bored and daring enough to pick through the ashes. Well, you have reached the end of Kairos conquest. Yeah, let's continue. That's pretty cool as an image, isn't it? I even do like it. 431. And Kairos's invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The younger realms, the Bacter tier, the free cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. Okay. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. That's something you should not have done, actually, sweetheart. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the disfavored and scarlet chorus redeploy to Vendrian's well to crush the resistance. But months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers, or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. And thus, my hunt for the Oathbreakers begun. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. Okay. Ooh, nice. It looks like she's crying blood. I'm sure it's rust. Fate Binder Maracroth, I presume. I've been expecting you. Right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is a pretty decent time to end the episode. Ooh, I can hide helmet. Yeah, look at that guy. Anyway. For now, I'm actually kind of impressed with the graphics. I didn't think they would be that good. But we'll see. I'm gonna see you all next time. Goodbye.